Hi guys! So it's been a while since I did a video because I've been a little bit busy with my real estate business, but that's okay. Uh, in the meantime though, my plant projects have been piling up. So there's a number of video ideas that I have to get filmed and get out to you guys. But the one that I've been wanting to do for a while um, is on propagating pothos. And I did have a propagating video out previously that you can refer back to in which I talked a little bit about this, but I wanted to go into the golden pothos um, specifically a little bit more in depth because I feel this is the perfect first house plant. If you are not like at all experienced with house plants, the golden pothos is really, I think the ideal first plant for you to take on. Uh, very easy care. It's easy to propagate. And again, if you don't know what propagation is, it's just getting more plants from your original plant, so free plants. So the uh, thing that's nice about these golden pothos is they do not require a ton of light. Um, they do well when they get a little bit more light. Um, I would never put them in like really heavy direct light because they could scorch. But um, even if you have a place that's you know pretty dimly lit, um, these will even do great in your office under fluorescent lights. Like they will do just fine under fluorescent lights, but they just need some sort of light. So they're pretty uh, easy in that respect. Um, also watering, um, you can just about kill these guys and they will bounce back. So uh, they're just about impossible to kill. Um, I water mine once a week and then once a month I give them a uh, organic fertilizer. So that's the, the basic easy care for these plants. And like I said, you can propagate them and get new plants. And that's what I have going on here in this space. Um, what I do is I take cuttings and I'm gonna show you specifically how to do the cuttings um, to get the best result. And once I take the cuttings, I put them either into a vase or um, this is a pretty just a bud, bud vase and you can make a beautiful little arrangement and just enjoy it on your desk or on your counter, your sink, your dressing table. I mean, it's just a really beautiful presentation in itself while you're waiting for your cuttings to root. So what I want to do is I want to take you around and show you some of my golden pothos that I have in my house. Um, my rule of thumb is that I like to cut them back once they hit the floor um, because there's a number of ways that you can display your golden pothos. And I say golden pothos because that's the variety that I'm dealing with today, but there's a number of different varieties of pothos um, that are all the same in their behavior and propagation and water needs and light needs, everything's the same. So um, what I do is a combination of two ways that I present my plants. I like most of them to vine a little bit, but that's where my rule, my personal rule of not once they get on the floor, I trim them back. But some people let them trail and vine and they put up like little hooks uh, on their walls and they let them vine along the walls, which is really a beautiful, more bohemian look. Um, you know, I can definitely appreciate that. It's not my personal style, but you know, sometimes a little piece of me is like, oh, I would love to trail my plants all over my house, but that's a small part of me. The bigger part of me likes things a little bit more trimmed and tidy. Um, but I do enjoy letting these guys vine um, pretty profusely. Uh, the other way you can do is like right behind me is you can vine them up on a pole. And once they vine up on a pole, um, they get really beautiful big leaves. Their leaves grow bigger. When you have them vining up a pole, the leaves will grow bigger. And I'm not entirely sure what the reasoning is behind that, but that's just what occurs. And I'll show you a close up on this plant so you can see the difference in the, in the leaf size. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, there's, there's uh, and then the, actually a fourth way, some people don't like to let these trail at all. They like to keep them more compact and rounded. 
and you can do that too. So there's really, you know, there's several ways that you can display these plants in your house, depending upon your personal decorating style and your taste. So, but it, like I said, these are just like the perfect gateway drug to plants. <laughs> you get a taste of these guys and enjoy how prolific they are. And it's just a jumping off point into the plant world. But uh, I love them. I think they're an excellent first time plant for anyone. So I'm gonna take you around my house, show you my pothos that I have. I'm gonna show you how and where I cut them and uh, get them propagating. And this guy here, this one is quite long. This I took off of, uh, I have an antique desk up in my bedroom. It's an antique school desk. And uh, this has gone in to the point where it's hitting the floor, but when you let it trail, it does create weight. And this pot that it's in, I love this pot. It's a self-watering pot. And what it is, it's plastic and it's a pot within a pot. And so you can see it's got lots of roots coming down. I really could repot this and I was thinking about doing that. Um, but I think I might just cut it back. But it's got strings coming out of the bottom and then it just has a reservoir of water down here. So, um, you know, I just put some water, just water it like once a week and there's always a little reservoir of water down in there. But it doesn't create as much uh, weight as what this length, I mean this, I don't know if I could show you, like, this is a pretty long plant and it creates a lot of weight. And so it was actually pulling it over and toppling onto the floor and creating a dirt mess. And just like, it was a pretty big disaster. So I either have to repot this into a heavier pot or I have to tr trim it back. I'm leaning towards trimming it back because I do like this pot. I might just add a little bit of topsoil, um, not topsoil, but um, some potting soil into the top of this because it has kind of you know broken down and it could use some more potting soil. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna top up this with potting soil. I'm gonna trim it back, create a bunch of cuttings. Um, and I think I'm gonna plant this guy because there's, there's some really nice roots going on there. So let me take you for a walk around my house and show you my pothos collection. The first one I'm gonna show you is here in my dining room. And that is one plant. It actually looks maybe like two because I have it vining over the other side. But uh, this is actually my oldest plant that, gosh, I think this is the original plant that I've had for years and years and years. And every other plant I have pretty much comes from this and uh, maybe some cuttings from another one, but this is the oldest one. So um, that is sitting on top of my dining room china closet and as you can see over there it's starting to hit the floor so i really need to cut that back but basically what i have done is to try to um balance the weight a little bit because i was discussing with you about how these plants do have weight to them when you let them vine like this so what i did is i took several of the vines and i have them coming off and down and around here and then I have them going around the back side of this heavy pot to again provide some support and it comes down and trails down on this side so I always have to keep this trimmed and I have to keep over here trimmed so as you can see and they just grow so fast I mean I cut these several times a year so I'm just gonna change my camera angle and I'm gonna show you how I trim and how I decide where I'm gonna trim. But I just feel that this is just, ah, uh, it's so beautiful. And I do love the vining trailing look over the furniture. Not everybody likes that, but that's just my personal style. Um, but this is, this needs to get thinned out a little bit. So I'm gonna take off, not just the stuff on the floor, but you know, I see I got a piece over here that's starting to like wanting to go vertical up the wall and actually, let me see, is this attaching itself? Oh my goodness, it is. And this is what they do in nature. They can attach themselves to the trunks of trees, sides of buildings, and look at, it's, it's attaching to the wall. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I feel about this right now. I think that is so wicked cool, but, oh, I have to think about that. Do I really want to let that thing crawl up my wall? That's just so neat though. I mean, isn't nature amazing? That is so cool. 
And I bet you this guy would start to do that too if I let it go. So he's not, but I think I have to cut this. But oh, that is really, really neat. I might wait until my husband comes home so he could see that and then I'll, I'll trim it off. <laughs> but oh, nature is so amazing. But got to get these guys trimmed back and maybe a little bit off the front here. I might take it up to like maybe around here. But look at all of that. So many cuttings. Okay, let me change my camera angle and we'll get cutting. Okay, so I am going to start by determining the length that I want to cut. So I think I'm gonna take this piece here up to about this point. And what I do is I want to make my first cut right below a leaf, just because for the re remaining plant, it looks nicer. So I'm gonna take and just cut there. And then what you're left with is this really long piece that we will cut into maybe a couple of sections um, because this is pretty long. So we'll probably make this into a couple of cuttings. So I'm just gonna set that aside for now and I'm gonna do all of my pruning right now. So next I wanna take this piece that's on the floor and I'm gonna cut it, take about that much off of that. And let's see back here. Off of that one. And about that much off of that one. So now I'm still left. And you know, I take the opportunity to trim off any brown dead leaves that I might find. Um, but I am going to still leave. Wow, this this is really Oh, it started to trail behind my china closet. So I'm just gonna untangle this a little bit. And I'm seeing some more dried leaves. But let me untangle the piece that was kind of back behind. Oh, and that's very long. <laughs> okay, so, oh my goodness. And that's the thing is they just vine around each other and it's just, they're just such an amazing plant. So I'm gonna take that to about there. All right, there we go. See, there's a number of dead leaves on there because it was back behind the china closet. So, oh my gosh, this is just huge. Tons and tons of cuttings off of this one. All right, and then I just wanna show my husband this one that's vining up the wall, which is super cool. Um, but I am looking here and it's starting to come unattached and where it's attached to the wall, I'm just gonna take the camera and show you um, where it's attaching to the wall, it's leaving marks, um, which I'm guessing will just clean off the wall. Um, I'm not super concerned because these are not freshly painted walls. This is actually the only room in our house that we didn't paint when we moved in because I couldn't make a decision and I was just like, and I was, I was fine with the creamy color of it because it was nice and neutral because I do have a lot going on in my dining room here. So didn't paint it. So I'm not like freaked out that there's marks on my walls, um, but I probably don't want it to continue. So I'll leave that, but I'm gonna show you what that looks like. That is just so fascinating to me. So let me show you. Okay, so if you can see those marks on the wall line up with those little nodes, they just like get sticky stuff on them and they stick and climb. Isn't that fascinating? So this is now being held onto the wall by this, oops, I'm sorry, this and that. Super fascinating. So I think I'm just gonna pull it off the wall and I think it's gonna be probably just about to the floor, but so I'll probably leave it. But let me back up and show you now Move my chair out of the way. Now we have no more trailing on the floor. So that'll come off the wall. That'll just hang down. I mean, not a very, <laughs> not a very hard prune or anything. So that is plant number one. 
So now I'm just gonna take you along and I don't really have to talk you through. I actually, you know what, this looks a little strange. I think I'm gonna cut this back to here. So I'm gonna cut that and then I'm gonna take you around to the other plants in my house and get a bunch more cuttings and make a cutting arrangement. All right, let's go. have a huge pile of cuttings here and this is going to make a really beautiful rooting bouquet. Um, so what I did is I went downstairs in my stash of vases and I got this really pretty one. I just love the shape of it. If you could see. Filled it with water almost to the top and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and I'm going to be cutting some of these into a couple of pieces um, and making even more cuttings out of them. So what I do is when I trim them off, off of the plant, I cut it right below a leaf so that it doesn't look funky on the plant that's left. But when you bring it into the house, or I'm sorry, when you bring it into your area where you're going to be, you know, doing your propagation, you have to do a little bit more prep on this piece. So you don't just shove it in there and all these leaves and everything. So first of all, we have to take off the bottom, you know, sometimes three, four leaves. So I'm just cutting it next to the stem. One, two, three on this one. Because what you want is you want to have several nodes that can produce roots. So the nodes, are these brown, I don't know if you can see, these little brown nubbies on the stem, okay? Those little brown nubbies are all gonna produce roots. And also, this little bit of stem below the node, trim that off. So I've got one, two, three nodes. I'm gonna stick that into the vase. And I also like to see that it, it like really gets down into there, so I might well, I'm going to leave that bottom leaf on there for now, but it's kind of leaning over the edge a little bit. I like to drape them, see like that, but I want to make sure that there's enough in the vase to hold it, enough weight. So I actually might take one more leaf off so I could stick it down into there, into the, yep, that's better, into the water a little bit deeper. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Maybe I could get a better look here at what I'm doing. There we go. All right. Next one. So I am going to now take this one. This is a pretty long one. I might actually make this into two pieces. So if I'm gonna do that, I'll just cut it right in the middle. Okay, and then I'll take off a couple leaves, cut it below the node, stick it in the water. Okay, now, Oh, now you do have to pay attention to which side is up. This was growing this way, okay. So this is the end, the bottom end is gonna go in the water. So I'm gonna cut that leaf, this leaf, cut it above there, one more leaf. Stick it in. And that is the process that I'm going to go through with all of these. So I probably will speed this up, put some music on, and go from there.
cuttings that are just gonna go in my compost pile. But look at this pretty, pretty bouquet. Isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous. And actually what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna make a really beautiful plant. So I am going to take these pretty cuttings out of this bud vase. And although most of them, there are some newer cuttings in here, but like, look, I don't know if you can see, look at all the roots, tons of roots. So I'm just gonna put this back in with these guys. Let them all root in together and then I will plant them all together in a beautiful big pot. And I don't know, maybe give it as a housewarming gift to one of my folks that are buying a house these days. A new plant makes a nice housewarming gift, I think. So we shall see. Or maybe I'll take it to the office. I don't know. <laughs> But either way, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, how pretty, pretty, pretty. All right, so I'm gonna get cleaned up here and I'm gonna grab some potting soil for this guy here. It's gonna go back up in my room and water it. And I will show you where that ends up and where this ends up, so in a minute. pothos that I trained up a pole and I have that in the corner of my kitchen so it gets really nice indirect light from the French door there so it's just such a nice location and now it's got its little friend the Boston fern for the winter um, but let me just show you the size of these leaves when these start to vine up the leaves just like really grow in size like Here's an example. Here's my hand. This is almost the size of my hand. I mean, just beautiful. And this is another thing that I love about the Golden Pothos is you're gonna have a nice variety of leaf coloration. You're gonna have solid green, and you're gonna have ones that have cool marbling like that. Maybe some that have a little bit less. Some that just have a tiny bit. That almost looks like it's a reflection, but it's not. It's just a little bit of, you know, the, the creamy white. And then you get like the really more golden color. I mean, these leaves are just all so different. But what will happen is the more light that it gets, the more variegation you're gonna get. So if you get this plant and it starts out with green leaves um, and you don't have a whole ton of light, you're not gonna get that much variegation. But if you stick it somewhere where it gets more light, it's you're gonna see more variegation. So it's it's just so interesting, you know, but some of them just like, just get a little smattering. So cool, so many different varieties. Here's another nice big leaf. Just gorgeous, but they definitely, definitely get bigger as they vine up. And with this one, I just have to like trim on the top, but it, then it forces it to put out shoots like from the sides and the bottoms, like, you know, here's a piece that's coming out and I just keep threading it up and in and weaving it into the plant. And the other thing you wanna do with this plant too is um, you wanna wipe off the leaves you know, maybe once a month, a couple times a year, whatever, but the leaves will get dusty, just like anything else in your house. And when the leaves have dust on them, they don't photosynthesize as well. So uh, this one I could feel like this needs a dusting. I need to take a nice, just a damp cloth and uh, just wipe them down. Um, smaller plants, you can pop them in the shower and just like 
you know, with a hand shower or whatever, or, into, or in your sink with your sprayer and spray them down. That's a possibility. This is way too big. So I, I will just hand dust this. But um, that is how you can have a pothos on a pole. And all you do is you take your vining plants and you put them in a pot with some sort of a stake. You could use a piece of rebar. This is just an old piece of wood that I had lying around. And I started to just wind it up and I secured it very loosely with some zip ties. You can use twine, string, rope, whatever. Um, you know, soft twisties of some sort. Just give them room so you're not like squeezing them. Um, but you just start wrapping the tendrils of the vines around and wrap them up and uh, there you go. So just, uh, look at that one down in there. That's so pretty. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous variegation. So pretty. And the one last thing I would add about when you're putting a pothos on a pole is that every week I would turn it a quarter turn so that you get even growth on all sides of the plant. So I just rotated this one and you can kind of see how we have a little bit of area there that needs to fill out, you know, so it looks a little bit fuller there um, and you can't kind of conceive perceive um, the growth coming from the front now, but uh, it needed to be rotated and I'll leave it there for a week, maybe two weeks. Um, so this like side can kind of fill in a little bit and it can reach to that side a little bit. But that way, you know, you get nice even growth and you don't get one side dying off because it's getting like, you know, pretty much no light. So um, that is the final tip that I have for you about growing your pothos on a pole. All right, guys, I had to switch to my camera. Something happened, I'm sorry, from my camera to my phone. Something happened to my camera and I had to send it out for repair. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on Golden Pothos. I love this plant and I hope that you'll consider adding it to your collection if you don't have one already. And if you're new to houseplants, I hope you take one of these on and it just see how enjoyable it really is. It's such a gorgeous plant. And I want you to remember that just because a plant is common, doesn't mean that it's not beautiful and amazing. It's common for a reason. It's common because it's easy to grow and take care of and it's beautiful. So check out those common house plants because they can really, really be worthwhile. And I think that's definitely the case with Golden Pothos. So hope you enjoyed this and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.